what's up guys today we're going to be going over dns today so i just got a little demonstration right here so we can uh, see what we're actually going to be doing inside of this video pretty much what we got going on here is we got us say for instance we want to try to uh, call our buddy over here and his name's google.com he's going to call the operator because the operator is going to have all the list of phone numbers and the uh, names uh, correlated to them phone numbers and the operator is going to tell us what the actual phone number is for our buddy google.com and then we can directly call him with that phone number so i'm just going to show you right here and um these are all analogies but pretty much let's think of the operator as the actual dns server so the dns server is going to have a updated list of domain names and it's also going to have the correlated ip address associated with that domain name that's why we're going to contact our domain name server and they're going to tell us what IP address we need to contact to get in communication with that actual server. So I can just show you right here. Now, um, where's Google.com? So we're asking the DNS server or the operator for our, our analogy. Uh, and then uh, our DNS server is going to send back to us the IP address correlated with Google.com. Once we have the actual IP address, we can actually not talk to the DNS server, just talk directly to Google.com. Hey, that's pretty much what a domain name server is. And the main reason that we're actually doing this is because instead of updating every single system out there with a up-to-date sheet of domain names correlated with IP addresses, what we actually do is we have dedicated servers that we're like, okay, we're going to all agree that we're going to update this one server and this is going to be like an up-to-date phone book of domain names correlated with up-to-date uh, like IP addresses. So uh, you're pretty much telling your computer to ask them what uh, the IP address is for a domain name. And there is other things like, for instance, like cache and stuff like that you're going to have stored on your system for stuff that you have uh, looked up more frequently. It is going to keep a cache and stuff like that. But in general, whenever you're going to try to find an IP address that your PC doesn't recognize, it's going to ask your domain name service. And that's pretty much what we're going to be going over today is how to change that inside of Linux. So our actual domain name service for our Linux box. So there's two different ways that you're actually going to be doing this. There's going to be a different way for Ubuntu uh, and Debian distributions, uh, and which is going to be using the uh, resolve.conf. And you, there are other ways of doing this, but that's the easiest way that I've found on Debian distributions. Now for Red Hat, you're going to actually be able to do the old way, just using the network manager to update your domain name service. And I'm going to show you how to actually do both inside of the terminal today. So... Now resolve.conf, this is going to be uh, relatively easy. Some uh, systems are going to have it on it by default. Like for instance, my Ubuntu server edition 20.04 already had it installed whenever I put the operating system on my server. But there are going to be a lot of systems that you're going to have to install this. So obviously you're going to just be, the package is actually called resolve.conf. So you're just going to do sudo apt install resolve.conf. The service name is going to be resolve uh, resolveconf.service. The file uh, that you need to actually edit to change your DNS is going to be etc resolve or resolveconf forward slash resolve.conf.d and it's going to be head. The, uh, the head file is actually what you're going to be uh, editing. In the format uh, you're going to be putting inside of there, you're just going to be putting name server and then the IP address, uh, the IPv4 address of the domain name server. For instance, I got Google right here, 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Now, to actually update resolve.conf, because it's not going to actually do this by default, you're going to just do sudo in the command resolveconf-u to actually update the DNS server that you're actually going to be using. There is network manager uh, in Debian distributions, and you can actually do it this way. Uh, I haven't looked into it very much, uh, but you can use network manager. I've just found it to be easier to just use network manager for uh, Red Hat distributions, and like I said before, resolve.com for... Uh, Debian distributions, but you can see right here the actual uh, service is going to be con uh, called network manager and you do have to have the caps in the N and the manager uh, and then dot service file that we're going to be editing is going to be uh, etc uh, sysconfig network scripts and ifconfig dash eth zero now this file is stay consistent I don't know if it's going to be different on your system uh, but every system that I've worked on is going to be ifconfig eth zero I would imagine that if you're using a different interface, it might be a different file name that you have to edit, but I'm not sure of that. The format uh, that we're going to be putting this in is just going to be DNS1. You can have up to three DNSs, and that also applies for resolve.conf. 
and you're just uh, here's Google again. So DNS uh, one equals eight dot eight dot eight dot eight, and uh, to update the network manager, you're just going to restart it. So we're just doing sudo system control restart network manager. Well, let's hop over into the terminal, and I'll show you how to change your DNS server on Linux. All right, guys, now that I'm inside of the terminal, you can see right now we're on a Debian distribution. So we're just going to change the DNS on this system. So I'm just going to show you what we're using for our, uh, our DNS right now. We can do google.com, diggoogle.com. This is um, pretty much if you want to find an IP address of a domain name, you can just use the dig command to actually pull up that information. And it will also show you what you're using as our uh, DNS server. And you can see right here the server is actually on my local area network. And uh, you can also see uh, Google's IP address. But the important part for us is also uh, seeing the domain name server. Another way you can actually tell, and this isn't always reliable, but it is pretty reliable. Uh, if we go etc and resolve.conf, and we can see right here, these are what my domain or uh, DNS uh, servers are that inside of my settings. And how we're actually going to change that, like I said before, we're going to use resolve.conf. So I could do a sudo apt install resolve.conf. And this is going to be already installed on this system. Uh, and once you do that, you can do a, a sudo system control start resolve.conf. And sudo system control enable resolve.conf. And now we're just going to take a look at the status. So sudo system control status resolve conf. And we can see that it's actually running right now and it is enabled. So whenever you, uh, what we were doing up here is enabling it is going to make it so whenever you actually boot the system, it's going to automatically start and starting it's just going to start it. If you enable it, it's not going to start it by default. If you do install this, uh, my experience has been that it's going to run on uh, start or run after you download it. So, and uh, the only file we're actually going to need to change here is a sudo nano. It's going to be inside of etc uh, resolve conf and resolve conf d, and we're going to edit the head file. Now, right inside of here, we're just going to put name server, and this is where you're going to put your uh, name server that you want to use, or your DNS server, and you can put up to three inside of here. I'm just going to use Cloudflare, uh, Cloudflare and um, uh, Google, uh, their DNS, so we can save that, and it's not, if we actually cat this out, There we go. You can see that nothing has changed yet. If I actually dig something here, um, clear the screen here. If I dig google.com right now, you can see we're actually still using that uh, DNS server that's on my local area network here. Uh, to actually change it and actually update it, you're going to just do a sudo resolve conf u, and that will update it. Now, if we cat out. Um, uh, resolve.conf, you can see that we actually have our two updated uh, DNS servers right here, uh, uh, Google up top and then Cloudflare right below. And if we dig right now, it's actually going to be using uh, our Google DNS. Uh, as long as it, pretty much these backups, if uh, I can't find the domain name, is going to check through the list. Uh, but Google is going to obviously going to be able to find itself. So let's do google.com. Now we can see that our server that we're using as a DNS right now is uh, Google's 8.8.8.8. .8 now we can uh, do this inside of CentOS. I can just show you right here. Go fetch. We're inside of uh, CentOS right now. And we can use the uh, dig tool inside of CentOS, but it's not going to be installed on default. So we can just do a DNF install uh, bind dash utils. We're going to have to be sudo for that. Okay. All righty. And it's going to tell me that I already installed it. Um, and now we can dig for google.com right here. And you can see this is our DNS server. This is actually a Linode instance, so it's going to be using their DNS. And I can actually cat out etc and resolve.conf inside of here too. And you can see that these are all Linode's DNS servers.
So uh, now we're just going to have to edit that file. So I can do a sudo nano etc sysconfig network scripts and if config dot eth zero. We can go inside of here. Now they're going to have examples down through here. So you can see they have their DNS inside of here and we can actually just change it. So we don't actually have to put the uh, DNS one equals. We can just edit this right here. And I would uh, suggest doing backups if you're concerned that if this doesn't end up working, you can just put the backup file back into here and then you, so you don't end up messing anything up here, but I'm not going to do that. All right, now we got Google. I put Cloudflare right inside of here. All right, and I can actually erase this one right here. All righty. We can control X, yes, and enter, save that. Now we're just gonna have to restart network manager. So we can do a pseudo system control restart network. Remember, you gotta have them caps, otherwise it won't work. Actually, let me a little bit so you can see a little better. And manager. And now that that's restarted, we can cat out etc and resolve.conf. And you can see that we now have uh, Google as our main DNS server and then Cloudflare as our backup. And I can actually dig google.com right now. And you can actually see that the server that we're using is google.com's DNS. <laughs> Another... Um, Good command to know. I don't know if they're going to have it on CentOS. I actually didn't check this, but we can use NS lookup and you can also do google.com. And it's going to just give you all Google's IP addresses. And it's also going to show us the server right here. You can see that this is our DNS right up top. So, well, hopefully this was helpful to you guys. And thanks for watching. Like if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. And come back next time. Peace. <laughs>